What's up guys and welcome back to my channel Philly in the Philippines. If you're new to the channel, checking out my channel, thanks for stopping and consider subscribing. If you're a returning subscriber, thanks for stopping back. If you're a super subscriber, you know who you are. Thanks for stopping in. It's going to be a talking head video. Uh, as you can see, back home, back here in Angola City, we came back yesterday, um, Monday. You guys know we went down there. If you've been following the channel, you, you know we went down there, checking it out, uh, spent a whole month down there, exploring the area, seeing what it's like to live there. Would, is, would it be a place we would consider living in the future? Remember, guys, in the future is the key word. We're not jumping up next week, next month, two months from now, and moving anywhere. Um, right now, we are staying here. Uh, our daughter Hannah's in school, Bing's in school, and we'll be here till she graduates school, which is about another two years. Uh, but between now and then, we plan to travel around and find where we want to live. You got to remember something, guys. You have to be happy with where you're at and where you're going to live if you retire in the Philippines. I know a lot of guys come here, meet their wives, bring them back to the States, wherever, Canada, Germany, Australia, wherever. And all they know is the area where their family, where their wife's family is. And they have a good time when they go there, when they visit there. It's a party, it's fun. And, you know, they, they go back to their country they're in, and all of a sudden they want to buy property and land in that province where they're at. But they never lived there. I have always said, live somewhere for a while to see if you enjoy it. You might build a house, retire and go there. And in a year or two, you're just not happy with living there. Uh, so I always tell people, make sure you are happy with where you live. I know a lot of people have always said to me, why don't you buy a house in Angola City? I've always said, because I don't plan to live and build a house here. It's great here in the city. I can deal with it, but it's not where I want to be. So just remember that. Remember that. Anyways, you know what? I'm going to kind of go over like the pros and cons of the things I found and my wife found and we agreed and talked about in Porto Galera. Um, you, you might find Porto Galera the place you want to be. And that's where you want to be and that's where it's going to make you happy. Uh, food. Food is the first thing we want to talk about. I got a little list here in my hand so I don't forget food. Are there places down there, um, a big, I guess you call a menu of places you can eat? Uh, you know, Jollibee's, McDonald's, in, in the cell, um, places like that, fast food places. In that area of Porto Galera and Sabang, no, there's not. Uh, you would have to travel to Calapan uh, City, which is an hour and a half away. Um, so food like that, fast food restaurant chains, they don't exist unless you travel. Can you find American food down there, Italian food down there? You can at certain places. There are resorts, uh, there are you know, restaurants down there that you can find, you know, places that carry that. Um, I've, every place I ate at down there, what I ordered was good, was really good. Uh, best hot dogs that I've eaten in the Philippines were down there at Sly Dog. Uh, so yeah, the food is there. When it comes to the market, there's not a big market down there but you can find what you need. There's not a huge grocery store down. What I mean huge, I'm comparing it up to here in Angola City. They don't have it. They do have the grocery stores. You can find the simple things you need. Um, I found a place that had bacon and lunch meat. So there were specialties down there that I did find. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, would it deter me from not moving down there because I don't have such a big, you know, menu of places I can eat? No. No, it would not. Um, but yes. And also the cost of food at the markets are a little bit more expensive than up here in Angola City. I was told because of import fees. So food, yeah, wouldn't bother me. I could find and I could survive. Uh, 
banking. Banking is another thing. I think there are two banks in Puerto Galera. So unless you are in their bank, unless you are a member of the bank, I myself, I have BPI. Even BDO is in, in Puerto Galera. So you're going to have to travel. Or is BDO. Either, either way, I'm, I'm BPI. So in order for me to bank, which I bank every month, I'm going to have to travel to Calapan City. Like I said, it's an hour and a half one way. Then when you get there, there might only be, I think, maybe two BPIs in this city. It's not a big, massive city. It's a nice little city, uh, but you're going to have to travel. So I look at it that way, too. Um, if I needed money, uh, there are ATMs. You can get ATMs and find ATMs in Puerto Galera and Sabang there. They do exist. But banking, i got to drive. Uh, let me see. Housing. Housing, we, you know, I did some videos, put it out there, showed you the cost of housing. That's one thing here in the Philippines, you can find cheap housing. The thing I found out was a lot of the apartments that I showed, <clears throat> even the little houses that I showed, they're fully furnished. We have a house full of furniture. I don't need something fully furnished, but the prices were reasonable. And of course, depending on where you live, <clears throat> excuse me, Prices were cheaper or more expensive. I didn't have a chance to really go look at a Western style house, a big house. Um, but I did talk to people that are renting a big Western style house and they're renting 30,000 pesos, 600 bucks. Then I come across a person that, oh, I found a nice big house right on the beach, perfect location for me. And he was paying 18,000. So it's one of those, where do you want to live? How much do you want to spend? and looking for the great deal. Uh, I always said, if you do move to an area, stay at a place, rent a place for a month, hotel, uh, whatever. And then from there, search the area. Just search the area, ask people, ask track drivers. That is the best way to find a good deal on apartments. So they're there. The deals are there, the apartments are there, and they're reasonably priced. Uh, what, what's next? Transportation. There is transportation um, down in Sabang, where we're at, even in Puerto Galera. Uh, there's jeepneys that will run all the way to Calapan City. Uh, there's jeepneys, there's trikes. You can get a trike. You can rent a motorbike. There is transportation. So the transportation is not an issue if you don't have your own transportation. We have our own transportation. Prices are good. They're reasonable. Um, they're not ripping you off. So there is transportation, public transportation, that you can take. Uh, what's next? Here's a, key, here's a good one right here, clean air. The air is clean. You got that ocean breeze. You're not in the city. You're not sucking up the exhaust fumes from the trikes and the jeepneys and all that other pollution. The air is clean and that is, that's a key. You know, that is a key. Uh, breathing in that fresh air compared to breathing polluted air, right? Uh, what's next? Expats. Lots of, I wouldn't say there's like tons and tons of expats like in your bigger cities like here. But I talk to a lot of expats down there. Um, our dive group is all expats. Um, a lot of the people that... Um, have some of the nice restaurants down there or expats. And, you know, of, of course you have your groups, you know, your group of expats here, your group that hang together. They just click better together. But every expat I talk to down there, very friendly, very helpful. Um, but yeah, there is a group of, you know, there are expats down there. This is what I kind of broke it down to. You have the expats that just love to dive. You know, the group we go with, they go out one, two, about three times, sometimes four times a week, do one dive, maybe two dives a week. Um, the other expats are expats that no longer dive for some reason or another, and they're just there. They're just there. They like the area. Uh, they enjoy the area. So there are expats there, a good group of people, at least the people, the group that I associated myself with, and also the others that I ran into 
Good group of people. Good group of people. Uh, schools. Here's, here's the key thing. School. Hannah, like I said, in two years, and Bing, they're going to graduate. And then they're going to want to go to college. All right. We want to make sure that there are decent colleges in the area that we want to, you know, kind of like call our place permanently home. Down there, you know, there is colleges, I think, in Calapan, Calapan City there. But beyond that, there's not a lot of big colleges down there. I could be wrong. Somebody could say, oh, no, there's a big college and a great college here. Um, but that was a key thing we were looking at. You know, we don't want to, you know, she don't want to have to travel an hour and a half or so one way and an hour and a half back. Um, but college is another thing we looked at. And, um, you know, we're not going to sit around the row row every day to go over to college. Um, but as far as schooling in the immediate area of Sabang and Porto Galera colleges, there really isn't any. Um, and that's one of the things that we are um, concerned about and that we want to be able to have in an area where, you know, we plan to basically say this is our home, finally. Hospitals, hospitals is the key thing also. As an expat, you're going to get older. You know, you're, you're going to want to have a, a, a decent hospital. Calapan City has a hospital. And from what I told, they're pretty decent hospitals. But an hour and a half ride one way. What happens if you're in an accident? You might say, hey, well, you know what? I'm not going to drive. I'll let somebody drive me. I'm not worried about getting into an accident. What if you're walking down the street and you trip, you fall, you break a leg, you break an arm, you know, you cut yourself open and you need to get some type of surgery. Uh, there is a hospital in Porto Galera, but as I always call them, the Band-Aid Hospital. You're going to go there, they'll stitch you up, um, they might fix you and, 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 you know, they deal with minor, minor injuries. Um, would you go there to get a, you know, you break a leg and you need surgery on your leg, would you go there? No, you're going to have to either hop on the row row, go over to Manila, or go to Calapan City. Um, so a hospital is really an important thing. Uh, I know a guy, the guy was telling me a story because we were talking, you know, about hospitals, and he was telling me a story, a guy had a stroke, had a stroke. They put him in a vehicle, took him to Calapan City, an hour and a half away. He died. He died. If he could have got to a bigger hospital quicker, faster, it has saved his life. So you have to look at that too. Uh, you can get hit by a trike. You can get hit by a jeepney. Uh, anything could happen. Dog could come out and bite you, you know? Anything can happen. So you're never, you know, you know, free of, of, of being injured. You have to think about that. Um, I know a guy who uh, had a heart condition, spoke to him. Uh, he flew out of the Philippines, got into the States. From the States, he went right to the hospital. So these are some of the things that you got to really consider. And like I said, guys will come here, oh, this is my wife's province. I love it here because I only visit, you know, a month out of the year, and it's great, and we party, and we have a good time on your dime, remember, and um, building a house here. But these are the things you have to think of. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it was good down there. We had a fun time down there, um, learned a lot, met new people, really got to know the area pretty well, and you're going to do a lot of walking. Uh, it's a very hilly, very hilly, but keeps you in shape. So will we, will we return back to Porto Galera? Yes, of course we will. Um, matter of fact, two months from now, April, May, May when the kids get out of school, we're going to go down there for two weeks, take the kids down there, hang out, do some things down there with the kids, uh, try to get them to uh, do a fun dive. Another thing, of course, being down there, we love diving, so that's perfect for us. Um, why didn't we take the kids? A lot of people, they were saying, I wouldn't say a lot, you know, the people that want to stick their nose and tell other people how to raise their kids. Um, I'll, I'll never tell you how to raise your kid, uh, so don't tell me how to raise my kid. Uh, but they're like, I can't believe you left them there. They were in good hands. They were in good hands. 
We didn't leave them a sack of rice and a case of sardines to eat. They were, they were in good hands. Um, not only that, up to last month, uh, like a week or two after we went to down to Porta Galera, kids could not travel over there. They couldn't. Uh, now they can. So yes, we will be back down there and uh, take the kids down, just have a good time. Um, will we continue to go back down there again? Of course, it's, it's five and a half hours from, from our door down to Batangas on the row, row, five to five and a half hours to we're sitting in our hotel room. So yes, we will continue to go back down there and dive. And like I said, we've met so many great people down there. Um, our dive place where we go, Captain Greg's, I didn't get a video out because they are still working on it and I want to get it when they are completely done. Uh, so yeah, we, 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 we do enjoy ourselves down there. Will we move down there permanently? I would, if I were to guess, I would probably say no because there's certain things that we want that's not available down there. So anyways, guys, like I said, a talking head video, wrapping this one up. Thank you so much for all you guys that watched the videos from us being down there, from our walks, from our exploring around, checking out food, checking out uh, accommodations, and checking out the, the entertainment district, which, you know, people love, always gets the great views. Don't know why. Um, but thank you so much for, for just watching uh, the super fan, as I call them, for watching every single video. We love going down there. I love filming underwater. Um, it's our passion. It's what we love to do now. Um, other people have other passions. So anyways, guys, once again, thank you so much. And if you haven't subscribed and you want to consider subscribing, greatly appreciate it. On our way to 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And uh, leave the comments below. Give me some thumbs up. If you give me a thumbs down, that's okay too, but it won't show up as you gave me a thumbs down. So anyways, guys, we'll talk to you later.